just little collections me and Eve have got over the years. Yes. Yeah. So. I'm like the favourite kid in my family, so I get everything from my family. So. <laughs> are, you the, are you the oldest or? Yeah, I'm the oldest on my side, on like um, on my mum's side, so. Yeah, I get flipping everything. I'm like, that is go-to. That is the actual dream. <laughs> it's it's tasteful though because like you've got quite a bit of stuff, but it doesn't seem too overwhelming. Like you it fills the space nicely. well, An aesthetic but it <laughs> still feels like quite a minimal space. Yeah, um, we've got a very small space, but try how to many beds is the space? One bedroom, mate. One bed, one one bed is all you need. <laughs> one bathroom, one, one laundry, bathroom. one lounge. How long have you lived here for? I think it's two years, which is crazy. It's That's gone right. real quick. So, um, yeah. That's super it's looking, so. um, pretty fast though. When you yeah. look back on some of those, like, yeah. like you guys with the Maroon Mansion. Yeah. Oh, honestly, time flies with that, eh? That's crazy. Yeah. Um, I've been there for like two years now. I've been there for about three years on Marua. Oh, no. <laughs> no, longer than four. that. Four? Five? It's a four. long time. Nah, three. <laughs> 2017. I started my first full-time job yeah. in April of 2017. That's when I moved in. Classic. Yeah. And yet, like, they become, like, your, I guess your first kind of flat, your first, like, home with your wife. Yeah. Like, yeah. that kind of stuff becomes a pretty iconic yeah. part of your story. Eh? Speaking of wife, George, fill us in on the news. What's going on? Yeah, me and Evelyn are um, expecting a kid. Um, That's so cool and cool. exciting. <laughs> yeah. so, I remember I remember when you yeah, posted it on, on Facebook and it was like the um to the photo of the what were the words? Oh, um it's outside the Auckland Museum. Yeah. There's something big happening inside. So, <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Iconic. I think we were driving to drop off a meal at our, yeah. our mutual friends, John and Lauren, who mm. had just had a baby mm. as well. Mm. And I was just scrolling social as Arby was driving and went, oh my gosh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It's funny. I was with Katie and Katie saw it and then she like showed me straight away. She was like, a st- like she's so excited. <laughs> Oh, that's crazy. You're getting yeah, expectations on all the rest of us, G. Yeah. <laughs> no, congrats, man. That's it's very that's exciting. That's exciting. Like, yeah. um, I guess you're going to have to, yeah, really um, really up your cooking game now, eh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get into the baby puree business. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. Are you going to, like, um, are you going to blend up all the food you normally make? or? Apparently, what's, that's what my mum did and... I think that's why I've got such a good palate now. It's because, yeah, whatever they have at dinner, she just blended and that was huh. my dinner as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's buzzy, yes. So for you, like, having an extraordinary palate, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Fill us mediocre yeah, palate, yeah. Then, and, uh, Give us, give us, us rookies. Uh, probably a bit cocky there, but um, just I love, like, new flavours and... I don't, um, I'm pretty open to trying new things, you know what I mean? And so, I feel like I've tried most things and I understand flavors and damn. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. I guess in that way. Most things like around the world or like, um, like cause obviously I feel like there's so many different categories of food. Yeah. yeah. I feel like from a westernized version of what other cultures are, if you get yeah. what I mean, like, yeah. I'm not going to go and say to like a Korean person that I know all their flipping flavors and everything, mm. but like, <laughs> I've eaten out a lot and I've done a lot of different cookbooks from people that are genuinely from like other cultures and countries. Yeah, cool. so yeah. Pretty good, I think. Yeah. You're pretty good? Yeah. You rate yourself? Like I'm pretty good. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Enough to use it. <laughs> That's so good. The man. confidence of the man. For yeah. those of you listening on podcast, we're here for episode two of the Jeffrey podcast with our very good friend, Jordan Patterson, who is yeah. um, very. Um, yeah, very graciously allowed us into his home. Pretty good. <laughs> We're stoked. <laughs> we, we've Actually, taken the Jeffrey podcast on the road and here we are set up in his home, his beautiful family home, soon to be larger family home. With yeah, his actual baby. family home. Yeah. Yeah. Actual fam. His, his yeah. baby yeah. on the way. Be um, very cool. Yeah, so yeah, thanks for for jumping on board, bro. It's okay, mate. Thanks for, for having, having, on. having me. I right. listened to your first episode and loved yeah. it. So when you said... Come on for episode two. I was flipping stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He's here. He's ready. <laughs> yeah, sick. Bro, I want to know, when did you get into cooking? Like, when um, did it all start? I've always cooked a, like, um, 
my grandma's a really good cook and my mom's a really good cook as well and they mm. had me in the kitchen from a very young age that's so sick and um passing down skills <laughs> yeah hard like literally and yeah my mum always made a, a really special time like she let me write my own recipes even oh. though I just copied I just copied recipes and she could <laughs> I Jordy, so you're excited so right there <laughs> but like food I'd love to eat I'd help him make in the kitchen and in the recipe book we'd cross out um, whatever the name was and write like if it was like sausages and mashed potato and gravy it'd be like yeah. Geordie's sausages mashed potato and gravy yeah, you know? that's cool, and it makes me feel like really good yeah um, so I think from that point onwards I've just always done it you know because um, my grandma my mum gifted it to me and then I love that gift so much I wanted to give it to other people you know mm. like, that's awesome bro mm. because of that feeling so yeah that's so where it stemmed from. You launched this thing called Come Hungry, and it's yep. been pretty flipping epic so far. You've gone from Thanks, strength man. to strength, and he, Jordan Patson came around with Come Hungry and cooked for the boys one yeah. night. Yeah, he did. Oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> On another level. Like. Some of the best food the Mara Mansion has ever seen. <laughs> well, I thought Jordan was just going to come around and cook a pretty, like, yeah, a great meal, but he went the extra mile eh? it was like, insane he cooked for the whole flat yeah so six, I think there lads. might have been one lad absent but okay so five lads but we had what we had your your tacos your soft shell tacos yeah um yeah. with homemade fried chicken homemade yeah. fried battered fish yeah pulled pork, pork yeah. and was there another no there was just no, a three, three mates, and then yeah. just a whole smorgasbord of veggies oh. and toppings and it yep. was insane. It really was. I ate about 20. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I had to roll downstairs <laughs> yeah. after that. It was a it massive was <laughs> But like, see, the thing is, when you have good food, you don't want to stop. No. Yeah. Yeah. Hard up. Yeah. I think that's really cool, like, just seeing your message behind what you do, that everyone can do it. It's mm. not just, like, a privilege for those who know how to cook mm. right yeah. so so fill us in a little bit like from your point of view um where come hungry came from what that has evolved out of and, mm. and where that's headed like what is come hungry and how does that look um so i started it in lockdown um gonna be pretty honest just out of boredom i guess love it nice. <laughs> um so is that first lockdown kind of like march yeah when we were actually locked out in the house Damn. and because i would never normally have a reset like that where i've got a day where i'm yeah. literally doing nothing you know like literally nothing um and i just put up a dinner i was doing on instagram and i got a lot of really good feedback about it cool and um I watch a lot of that style of content like Sick. online mm. I never thought I'd be able to do it but um, I definitely have my own flair that I'm trying to put out there that like yeah. I want to make people understand how easy cooking can be Sick. and how um, you know how much of a gift it can be like when I came to your guys flat and wow. you guys just enjoyed it and Actress, like, yeah. yeah so that's where it sort of stemmed from I think mm. and then I've just been building on that base idea ever since because I'm not I'm not a marketer I'm not yeah I did design in college but I'm not like a I don't do it for a living and yeah so I'm really just learning and getting help from people along the boy along the way which I really related to that collaboration you know mm. that you guys were talking about last week mm, mm. Um, and it's just crazy how responsive people have been to that so yeah it's, it's all the building blocks, I guess, step by step. Yeah. That's so sick. Yeah. You said you love watching like other different creatives and stuff on like the style of content that you've chosen. Yeah. Describe that style of content. Like, well. Um, it's a lot of people were different, but it's all based on like um, making cooking fun and accessible yeah. and like this age where we've got YouTube and. So um, a lot of people use that as their platform just because mm. the video content is so needed for cooking like you need to see a visual representation yeah. mm -hmm. um, but 
yeah each person on that has a different style you know so like mm-hmm. some people it's like comedic and funny yeah. and some people it's really serious like high quality cooking mm-hmm. and other people it's like recreating food and recre- uh, recreating recipes so um i feel like me personally i've got like a niche in that industry you know what i mean it's so quite a recreating kind yeah. of thing uh doing like easy basic food because yeah even for me those videos if i follow those videos they're quite challenging like i'm not gonna lie Mm -hmm. they look really good but when you actually go to cook them they're super challenging you usually encounter like mistakes because it's not a professionally written recipe Mm. yeah yeah that's why i want to write like um one of my favorite chefs um maddie matheson He's got a uh, dog scale, so he calls it either a little dog recipe or a big, <laughs> big dog, dog recipe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Most of his stuff is big dog, yeah. <laughs> but um, I want to be like the little dog, you know. Like yes. I, I want someone who doesn't cook at all for themselves and is used to getting takeaways so every night, you know, yeah. Yeah. to find like rewarding, easy cooking. Yeah, a primo little yeah. dog recipe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little dog. I love dogs. Big dog, little dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. bro. Where where would you say you've taken like cuisine wise in regards to different countries, cultures, ethnicities? Like, yeah. where would you say you've taken your personal style from the most? Where do you get um, the most influence from? Because you're like a well traveled man, right? Mm. Yeah, kind of well traveled. Yeah, I I could do a lot more in terms of like. Um, eastern countries i I haven't really done asia or i would love to at some point but it's getting less and less likely with covid yeah it's harder but um one thing i love about cooking uh is how i can understand someone's culture a little bit more Mm. without even meeting them or chatting to them just by eating their food um and that's what I've really got into the last year without trying to like put my spin on it and glorify it and appropriate it. I'm trying to like learn more about other cultures cooking Mm. and explore the flavors of the cuisine from Mm. by just cooking their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And just following their recipes. That's so dope. And then I kind of, in my format, I kind of, um, uh, dumb it down, I guess is a way of saying Mm. it into like an easier weeknight format which a lot of people would probably say, oh, you know, if you're actually from Korea or like <laughs> Iran or something, yeah, yeah, you know, that's not how it's really made. Yeah, but that's not the goal of my thing, and cool. I'm not trying to. Have you had anyone. many people push back like that? Ah, uh, I've had a couple, like Damn. a couple of messages, because yeah. food is like really sacred to people, which yeah. I understand. Yeah, if it's something that you've grown up with, mm. and like your grandma makes and you mm. love it, and mm. I make it differently, I understand how you could be like. Come on, bro. That's who not how you make it. Who is, <laughs> who is this little dog with his little dog recipes? Oh, so gosh. I'm very sensitive to that because I know yeah. it's an issue. So that's mean. Um, is that stuff you don't even think about, eh? No. Like, at yeah, all. I would no. not think about that for a second. Damn. So my uncle um, spent quite a long time living in Cambodia. Yeah. And and through that, like the food there is insane. Yeah. Like a lot of kind of Thai influence from like Thailand and stuff like that. But um maybe halfway through his time there he got some form of stomach bug from drinking like bad water. Yeah. And yeah. so like or eating bad food, like that is still not sure exactly where it came from, but in that process it like meant he had to cut out like ninety percent of his diet and he was <laughs> on like the bare minimum like yeah. and even sometimes just couldn't even eat because if he ate it like flared stuff up inside yeah, yeah yeah and so i remember having a conversation with him like not long ago where he was saying that moment was when he realized the actual like tangible importance of food because yeah. it's so central to like socializing friendships yeah. community yeah. like all that kind of stuff and yet it's something that we like so easily take for granted yeah it's so true like it blew my mind to hear that but then hearing you talk about like cultural appropriation and Mm, it's that stuff you just don't think about yeah yeah it's quite a big deal for people so that's why i'm real cautious with how i present food that i'm Mm. cooking because i i don't want to hurt anyone's feelings or you know but 
on the same point i'm really inquisitive you know that's where i'm coming from it's like i want to learn more and i want to learn about things Mm. and um i don't want to you know ruin it for (laughs) you in the process what a better way to explore the world through food yeah literally so yeah that's awesome which is um it's pretty cool um and yeah even over food you know yeah that's so true it's such a good way to chat up with uh catch up with someone is um, chat up (laughs) such a great way to chat people up (laughs) slide on (laughs) this is my cooking (laughs) everyone loves a good cook like (laughs) just saying to someone um yo i'm gonna come around and i want you to cook me what you love you know Mm, what i mean mm. and like it's it's a really cool it's way like to make people. Right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, like your favorite meal. Like, what do you yeah. like to eat? Yeah, huh. which yeah, I like that idea a lot. Um, I've been mulling over that idea quite a lot actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mulling over that. Where does that take you? Like what? Um, I don't know. I I really like the idea of like meeting people and collaborating with people over their food. You know, that's cool. that's like an untapped. I think it's a really untapped space mm-hmm. in the market. The collaboration side of things. Yeah, instead of it all being about me, because mm-hmm. most most cooking centric stuff is like, this is the chef, and I watch this content because I like that guy, yeah, or that girl. But um, I think that could be really cool, like just going to somebody, mm-hmm. asking them to cook their family recipe, yeah, and interviewing them and getting to know a bit about them in the process, you know? yeah yeah like um communication through food so yeah yeah. what's the most extravagant meal you've ever been cooked that has just like stuck in your mind and your belly ever since um home cooking has a special place for me like yeah there's certain dishes that my mum's made since i was a little kid Mm. like um salmon risotto oh that just like I could be having the worst day of my life yeah. and I could go around to mum and dad's and have that and just be Geordie you know? <laughs> <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> but um, I've done some cool like um, sort of set menu stuff and yeah. degustations yeah. and they're always that's like another whole side whole of cooking you know? <laughs> yeah. like we did um, Spice Temple in Sydney and you've got like 18 courses and you've got 18 a little 18 courses you got a little <laughs> shot of um it's like essentially cucumber water with different um, minerals and yeah. herbs and, and stuff that like Lee. does your palate before oh, every meal. Interesting. 18 gourds. I'm yeah. still yeah. stuck on that. Yeah. Yeah. They were tight. Like, they're pretty small. They're literally right. mouthful yeah. bites basically, but the amount of work, that, that's like a chef's whole yeah. life's work and <sighs> set menu, you know. Yeah. That is insanity. Have Jeez. you ever had any experience working in like a restaurant context or? Um not any professional i've i worked in a cafe for a year and i did all the food in the morning so oh, baked all the scones that's right that's how we met right yeah at yeah. The parenting place. yeah no way <laughs> making yeah. early morning coffees really yeah yeah huh. it was actually yeah it was crazy i think back to yeah how long ago was that now fluffing I don't want to think about that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We've moved a long on. Time ago. <laughs> We're in a whole new world now. <laughs> I'm getting old, man. Oh, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. What um what are your thoughts on like the whole fast food industry, bro? Um I think there's a place for fast food. Mm. Um, but like anything, I'm a big moderation guy. Mm. And I've th- thought it's been really cool this year especially for the first time seen in Auckland and Wellington um, fast food style restaurants that are boutique in a way mm-hmm. like um, commercial bays like a good example like that whole food court yeah. yeah you're basically taking on fast food but it's a bit higher quality and it's actually going to New Zealand companies and New yeah. Zealand businesses you know yeah. what I mean yeah yeah um, which Aussie does really well, like Melbourne and Sydney do that, and they've been doing it for a while. Yep. Yeah. And even the same with, like, um, I know the Auckland Fish Markets. There's yep. some really cool yep. places and eateries in there where they're taking that idea of fast food, but they're yeah. sourcing locally, so they're getting all yep. their stuff from local <laughs> yep. producers and yep. then, like, from that being able to provide a high quality product yeah even yeah. the whole fried chicken movement here oh my word <laughs> <laughs> fried well, chicken. you've got a pretty saturated <laughs> market now 
uh, love it's, process. Me yeah, too. <laughs> but it's like <laughs> when it's done well, right? And it's, it's like boutique and it's, you know, it's just high quality. Yeah. It just yeah. sets it apart from all of your textbook fast food joints. Yeah, definitely. That, you know, it really stands out. We used to smash a lot of K-Fry back in the yeah. day. Like Charles, yeah. oh yeah. my word. We'd go to the gym. Open book, <laughs> full transparency. Straight back. Franco ate gym. one day 10 pieces of OJ. 10 pieces of OJ. <laughs> it's outrageous. It was ungodly. <laughs> like, absolute insanity. And we'd justify OJ. it because we'd come back from a workout or something. Like, it's just protein. Oh, it's just, it's, it's all just protein. protein. It's, all, it's all good stuff, yeah. geez. <laughs> so greasy though. Yeah. <laughs> it's man. punishing. Bro, what are your thoughts on all of these like fad diets popping up? Yeah. Like I'm talking about protein and like yeah, yeah, just yeah. got me thinking like keto and fats <laughs> and like all these different things that seem to be what popping up. What about Have you heard of that one? It's just oh, straight yeah, meat. Yeah, yeah. Carnival. <laughs> one of the boys yeah. is on that, isn't it? Yeah. Jordan Stubbs. Yeah. Jordan Stubbs. <laughs> Shout out Stubbs. Shout out Stubbs. Man. <laughs> but like what, what are your thoughts on all of those things? Because some people swear by them. Some people swear that they cure their um, allergies and so yeah. on. Like people who are literally allergic to everything mm, and yeah. until they they go carnivore they just have the most outrageous reactions to yeah. anything and everything um i can't talk on any of the science because i'm not a nutritionist so mm. i'm not going to bother even going from that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> but um i like i believe people that are doing those sort of diets it's for a health or a yeah. conditioning reason yep. and i don't have anything against that because like if if you have a health issue or like um you have a goal you want to achieve and you've chatted to a professional about a diet mm. then flip and go for it you go know? hard yeah but uh, my personal life um I really like have seen from generations, which is all I can take from. Like I'm not old enough to understand what a life of a balanced diet is, but mm. just eating healthily and focusing on whole foods. Yeah. Always going for that little bit higher quality than the average consumer buys. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. buying free range, buying from a butcher, making sure you source like local organic vegetables, yeah. obviously if you can't yeah. afford that extra spike. And I guess in step with that, supporting your locals, right? Your local yeah. butchers, your local farmers. So and Especially yeah. during this season. Like, yeah. Far out. It's yeah. like most, people, most people like that need it most of this season. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, I would encourage people to try, if they're struggling with foods or struggling with a diet, to really try... Um, a whole food diet which yeah. isn't even really a diet you can eat everything that you would normally mm -hmm. eat just aim to spend that little bit more on your meat and yeah. go for a lower quantity and mm -hmm. it usually balances out quite well you yeah. could buy a kilo of average mints or you could buy 500 grams of really high quality mints yeah. at the same price and you get the same uh, a way different satisfaction level yeah. you know, huh. from the high quality months. Plus yeah. you're probably getting what, double, triple the nutrients. Mm. Yeah, half the fat, yeah. um, double the protein usually, especially with like mints because it's so controlled by mm. what people put into it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, on the other hand though, I'm very keen on making food that I make adaptable for people. Cool. Like I don't want someone that's vegetarian to go to Jordan you know your recipes are cool but like I feel like <laughs> really not it's all nice like, but like yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so that's that's how I feel about it as well mm. if someone tells me or I know someone that has like a diet that they're doing I'm not yeah. going to go out of my way to force them out of it I want to make and it's a cool challenge for me you know like it's how can cool. I make this recipe tasty for someone else that doesn't necessarily follow the diet I do which was kind of the wise boys thing as well yeah, yeah. The wise boys that's so sick so wise boys elaborate on that a little bit like uh so wise boys did a burger competition so they're a yeah. they're a burger restaurant in grayland they're yeah. doing vegan burgers which is so sick. Yeah. it's really awesome what they're doing yeah, brilliant they're awesome kiwi we business. definitely bonded over some at laneway didn't we yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy God, i still remember that <laughs> Vividly, <laughs> I need my burger. Now. Yeah, <laughs> Kelly, was an awesome day. Give me my Kelly. burger now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was an awesome day. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good day. I remember coming here beforehand. We had like one of your big like. Um, oh, that's right. Fry up. Fry up. Um, yeah, hash. One of yeah, your good hashes. Hash. Oh, so good. Oh yeah. man. 
cranked it out, had some great white sharks on the way. (laughs) (laughs) It's an awesome day. It's a great day. Very, very good. But yeah, what happened with your um, your burger at Wise Boys? Uh, yeah, so I I won the um, burger. They ran a burger competition for their new special, and I won. I put out a burger. This was also on lockdown. Yeah, um, yeah. and won the burger special. So I worked with Tim, who's so a guy there, to um, develop that burger, and then it's finally out now. It's so, the, um, nice. What's it called? The shiitake burger. So uh, the shiitake special. But, oh. Yeah. And last time I went, I went a couple of weeks ago. It was really positive, you know, like people really enjoyed it. Yeah, so good. Um, heaps of people were ordering it. I actually got, I got told off by one of the chefs there because I got the crispy chip because yeah. I just, I love that burger. <laughs> it's like, such an unreal burger. How can you right? come here and not order your burger? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my, uh, sorry, wow, man. Wow. I just love the crispy chip. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was a cool experience as well. That really, that was a big thing for me. Cool. Um, but that's a good example, you know, of like, I love those flavors. And mm. that was an awesome challenge. Like, how can I make this vegan burger and a super satisfying burger? And I've got nothing against people that want to do that, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Just nice. finding a cool way to like weave that into, uh, into yeah. your creation. Yeah, get, get the same flavor that I'm getting and we're yeah. all sharing and just in whatever form you want. Yeah, done. Yeah, that's so mad. Yeah. What about you with Come Hungry, bro? Like thinking of wise boys with their food truck mm. and then look at them now like they've got two retail stores right yeah and yeah it's crazy or commercial stores and like what are you thinking with come hungry because right now <clears throat> you're very prevalent on your ig live yeah you know i can see um that you're starting to put up your your weekly schedules for your meals your yeah, uh, so. ingredients <laughs> and methods like what's next like what are you tr- what are you growing into um well i just i literally just posted um, yesterday when we were recording this um, um, the weekly menu which has been a big process for me behind the scenes because mm. cool. uh, it's a lot of admin mm. and um, that was a real big achievement for me so I hope people like it um, but that is a, a quite a big test for me for people to latch onto that and if they do I want to keep progressing that to the imagination that I have in my head you know so it's a it's a very base product at the moment like it's very stripped back yeah. and like literally me just in my own time doing it um on top of my full-time job mm-hmm. so um i want it to be organic and i want to have a really dedicated fan base you know with like good oh. reactions and um positive sort of feedback and if it grows it grows and i've already got the sort of ideas in my head for mm-hmm. how that grows i just want to make it organic you know that's yeah. so exciting yeah you like you mentioned full-time job before that's doing um builder so builder yeah, building full-time what yeah. are the boys on site think about it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, um, great. <laughs> um they think it's quite cool yeah I, it's kind of embarrassing on site i guess a little bit not in a bad way but it's a very like masculine um testosterone fuel environment <laughs> yeah. and when you say you know i I post on Instagram and do cooking. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you're not you're not really expecting the boys to be in on it. But um, now my boss has been really cool about it. You know, and his daughters follow me and Yo. watch my recipes every week. And, That's epic, man. Um, yeah. So I think people are pretty supportive, and um, I'm hoping because I keep it so chill and open that you know it's pretty open for people to come and experience it. But yeah, yeah, it's hard with tradies. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember you saying um, every so often on a Friday you'll get together and you do like proper barbecue lunches. Oh my right? Oh yeah, and our last job. Um so uh the guy the client that we were working for, he has his own barbecue meats company. Oh, so golly. use the opportunity. I actually learned a lot at that job. I yeah. probably learned more about meats than I learned about <laughs> <laughs> but, um, fitting, fitting. <laughs> He taught me a lot about um, smoking meats and like yeah. the different types of barbecues. And Damn. yeah, we made a thing like every Friday, so cool. we had a big, um, we usually did brisket or pork oh. or something. And, um, I saw some of your stories. Eh? Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome. It's it's actually mouth yeah. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to get into that avenue. Um, yeah. I've, he's got Amazing. a contact with a smoker. Um, so I do really want to get onto that at some point with Come Hungry, you know, mm. and show mm. people that. Because yeah. I know it's a big, it's quite a big buzz meal at the moment. Um, yeah. Smoking and meats mm. and all that. Yeah, so. it is. 
Yeah, I remember during lockdown, um, I went to Faro and I was like, I had some cash in the bank and I was like, I'm going to buy some meat for the boys. I was like, what's the best deal I can get for like the biggest amount of meat? <laughs> bought like a brisket. Yeah. And like yeah. it, bought it home and threw it in the freezer. I was so pumped and I was like, actually, I have no idea how to cut this <laughs> yeah. at all. Yeah. I have no idea what I'm doing. I was like, yeah. surely we just like cut it up and put it on the barbecue yeah. or something. That's a very strenuous yeah. process. Yeah. Like, like everything yeah. that's involved from the wood chips mm. to the whiskey oh and gosh, beer yeah. And, yeah like oh yeah it's a it's a it's an art really yeah it's, really um, it's really cool it's sort of um another whole food genre you know like yeah. um, out of this the southern bit of the united states you know like, mm, mm. they've really claimed that sort of as their own so yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's flipping cool yeah. it's sick to even see there's like a number of those uh kind of restaurants popping up as well literally last yeah. night katie and there's i we went to um this place in cambridge mm. uh it's called smoke or something like that yeah and they do they've been there for a year and they do literally just low and slow smoked yeah um yeah. all different types of meats and then yeah. like auckland i know they've got like the gerbil steakhouse they've got miss moonshines yeah. there's yeah, like yeah. all of these like like I guess meat places that are popping up yeah. all over the show and they're yeah, doing it real well. Yeah, yeah. it's the new fried yeah. chicken. <laughs> hard, hard. No, people yeah. love it, man. It's yeah. um, and again, that's that whole whole food thing, you know. It's because yeah. it's just like you cannot hide meat in that form. Mm-hmm. It has to be high quality. It has so to be well true. done. So yeah, yeah. yeah and people, people are willing to pay it. for that. Like people love that. Yeah, like that kind yeah. of if you're willing to put the time in to do something well. To have a high quality product, yeah, like people are there for it. People want to be part of that. And yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that's that's so cool, and it's a testament as well to like actually doing it well mm. and properly rather than shortcuts. Yeah, because um, yeah. it's so easy in this day and age to hunt out those shortcuts or like, I mean, with come hungry, you could be trying to grow inorganically and you know, yeah, yeah. but you're you're doing it. You're doing grass it the hard, level. grassroots yeah. level. You're hustling it, and yeah. Yeah. that's like mad respect. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. it's like what you get a handful of people tuning into your live, right? But then it's like if even yeah. only one person tunes in, like you know, you're you're showing someone how to cook, and yeah, someone's yeah. there with you, yeah, like right so there in the man. kitchen with you, really. Yeah, which is really it's awesome. awesome. Like I've had um, the first few weeks, it was kind of like starting it, but I've genuinely had people message me about. I'm cooking this right now. What can I do with this? Like myself. Like, <laughs> like, I think a couple of times now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I love it. Like, yeah. I, I, like, I get so excited when people message me about that because yeah. it's like, oh, it's working, you know? Like, yeah. that's my satisfaction yeah. out of this project. So, yeah, yeah it's very cool. Yeah. Um, what do you see big picture for Come Hungry? Like, big, uh, big, 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 big. Moonshot big, dream. Moonshot dream. It, yeah. We got hit with that last episode and yeah. we'd love to know. What's your moonshot dream with Come Hungry? If it was my, if I had enough of a following for it to be a job, yeah, like um, some actual financial income, um, I would love to really extend my weekly meal menu to the absolute max and do like a really cool online subscription service. Yeah, so so so, because I. There's all these companies that are popping at the moment, like um, My Food Bag and HelloFresh mm. and those sorts of things. Yeah. And mm, mm. coming from my perspective, you're just getting straight up ripped off. Like yeah. I can do all of those meals in half the price. Yeah. And just as good, just as healthy. Yeah. Probably even better. I'm gonna be cocky and say better. <laughs> right there, owner. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's like, what are you really paying for, you know? So you're, true. You're basically paying a middleman to go and do your groceries for you yeah. and bring it to you. Like, what if you could just have the recipes, you mm, know, mm. and tips from a genuine person, not a company, mm. you know? Yeah, cool. Um, so that's like my long-term goal, which I've been dreaming of a long time. But um, I want to, like I said, I want to, that's where this starts is this sort of skeleton, I guess, that I've put out to people. The people get on board and I get the feedback and then I can keep pursuing it, you know, and yeah. building it. Yeah. Um, which, so, I think that's my end goal, yeah. So, so. Yeah. I remember you and I having a chat, bro, and you said that um, your cooking really helps with your mental health and your anxiety. And, yeah. And, um, yeah, as someone who has challenges with anxiety himself, like, that's so cool to hear that you found, like, an avenue that mm. you 
yeah you find peace in like yeah. like a, a skill and a hobby and like, i'd love for you to elaborate on that a bit for us and let us know what that journey's looked like for you yeah so like um backstory for people that are listening who don't know me um i had really really bad anxiety coming out of late year college and yeah. early year uni where yeah. i really struggled to go to uni i I missed a couple of exams Far just up. off of not physically being mm. able to get in my car and drive to them. Yeah. Um, went to sort of therapy and uh, really got on top of it with like breathing techniques and like looking at my past a little bit. And mm. um, I never went down the medication route. Um, yeah. But so I haven't had that experience. But I really found cooking again in the midst of that. I was going through like my university years where I was just eating badly, mm. yeah. drinking a lot, um, just being a big wound. Just <laughs> a big old piss. <laughs> <laughs> um, Damn. And mm. it was all about just the um, daily grind of coping, you know. Mm. And now wow. that um, me and Evelyn are married, you know, my wife. My no. no. wife. <laughs> 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 and, um, she really helped me bring back that love of cooking Damn. into my life what and, an unreal um, woman that's amazing bro it's awesome because mm. it's for me it's the time on your own and mm. when you're doing nothing you have to focus on the recipe entirely like you can't go and do something you're yeah. stuck in one place it's rewarding you know for yourself you're like achieving something yeah. I could get out of bed in the morning at uni and have a whole day where I do nothing because of my anxiety. But mm. even like cooking, if you cook the dinner that day, it's like one thing that you can look to, you know, mm. and go like, I actually, you know, did something today. And that was mm. super rewarding for me at that, that time. That's so cool, man. Man, that's unreal. And then it's the gift on top of that. So yeah. it's, it's the gift of giving the food to someone else, whether yeah. that's um a flatmate or your family members or the person you live with or mm. partner or whatever mm. but um i think that combo for me just like really helped me um get back on track you know what i mean mm. and mm. a lot of my therapy that's what they talked about as well was you need a place with space you need a place where you can shut off you know mm. and you need to achieve something you need to do something like a lot of people do exercise to help yep. with their anxiety and stuff it's yep. quite a similar sort of goal i guess yeah mm. so yeah that's the process behind that that's um, so cool that's amazing yeah and it's crazy that cooking it takes so many forms of like unpacking people's culture and understanding the world that we live in mm whether that's just our immediate communities and environments and looking at local dishes that potentially we haven't explored or, or whether that's, you know, dealing with mental health and anxiety and yeah. like cooking and food is such a, like a, an integral part of our entire lives mm. yeah. that we don't even realize. Mm. And yet, you know, you, it's some just people just you get by on your wheat yeah. mix and your, your chalky bars yeah, and your, your fizzy pops. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. I've always said like food is like a language, you know, like yeah. um, lots of people compare music to language, like it's pretty common. It's like you can listen to crap pop music or you can mm. really get out there and explore music, mm. <laughs> find like local homegrown talent and like go to bars and listen to someone live. You That's know I mean? such yeah. a great way of putting it. But it's like a language. Food is the yeah. same, you know, food is like a language. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, there's some deep spiritual connection I think with mm. food and mm. other people so yeah yeah mm. how does how does your cooking tie into your faith bro and like uh, even on a deeper level than that like your purpose like do you yeah. do you find purpose through your cooking mm. yeah I definitely do I think it's a uh, I did that Sunday lunch um, for everyone which um, mm. the whole basis behind that Sunday lunch is that I've had the privilege of growing up in like a Christian household yeah and that was such a um, cool part of life for me growing up was knowing on Sunday after church we'd have all these people come around and we'd Damn. have a massive lunch just that kind of community vibe eh? that community and yeah. I know for a lot of people that is just not the case in any yeah, way true regardless of your religion or any of that but mm. That was that's where the idea stemmed from for Sunday lunch. It's like I want people to come over and pay very little yeah. 
for an awesome lunch and meet two or three people, you know, so and then simple. leave away yeah. from that. And yeah. I think that's, again, on the language thing, food can be a language for people mm. when other languages aren't necessarily working, you know, mm. like, it can be quite hot coming down some to me, like, yeah, yeah. here's the flipping Bible, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. The Bible is a language of itself, you know, yeah. and it's, it's a... Um, it's a touchy topic for some people as well mm. with their backstories, but food is like an awesome way to open the gates and chat to people and get to know people, you know, without it being kind of like on the Weird. street. Hey, yeah. how are you going? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. I think, um, like I said, with the spiritual connection, like I believe the same about music. There's something for me deeply linked with food and music to yeah. Christianity and a God and a spirituality, huh. you know. Um, yes, sir. Mm. So I don't know what that is, but I do. I yeah. do genuinely believe that. Yeah, huh. I feel like they're things that have been given to us, you know, yeah. to use. That's so man, that's awesome, bro. Yeah. Just around that community thing, like I know for me personally, like I'm a raging extrovert. I love those kind of environments with heaps of people. Yeah. But like, I guess for you, what some times we have seen or experienced food being used as a vessel to unite people. Um, it's a great gift for people that have had loss or mm. going through hard times. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's a very inexpensive gift. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some things in life that get thrown at us are very hard to deal with. It's and true. there's no gift that you can give someone in that situation that's going to make them feel better, you know. Yeah. Mm. But I've always found that food... Um, no matter what is just like a big hug you know mm. for people that are going through so a rough true, time you know? yeah. Yeah. I remember um, last year I think it was and I was having a pretty rough week I think mm. yeah, I had a few different challenges going on mm. and Annie Gummer got in touch, That's reached right. out um, one of our mutual friends and she was like hey want to help out anywhere I can can I drop you off a meal and I was like That's so man, true making a meal thinking of food was the last thing I felt like doing at yeah, that yeah, point yeah. and I was like that'd actually be so awesome and man she went above and beyond and oh dropped off like a four course meal like <laughs> flipping <laughs> entree like, main dessert <laughs> and just like just having people in your life with yeah. that sort of heart you, you see them doing it for our other friends and it's mm, like mm. man it is bro it is like a big hug like a, it's you know like hey I'm right here everything's mm. okay like it's it's so powerful that just a yeah. small gesture like that yeah and a, just a little bit of effort on someone's part like can, can completely be, alter your mindset or like can change your day not even week, say like, anything or encourage yeah. you with anything but yeah. literally just yeah. hand you a plate of food or so hand simple. you a soft yeah. shell taco yeah. <laughs> yeah. honestly yeah. life changing yeah. <laughs> yeah food doesn't our language sometimes you know it's not the best language but mm. like the language of food it doesn't discriminate it's not bias it doesn't have an agenda yeah. It's just exactly how it is and it's got a lot of emotion. It's got time behind it, you yeah. know, which is what people want, you know. Yeah. To, that's to, beautiful. To feel loved. I love yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Bro, we were talking about this as we were coming here and we wanted to know what is your vision for the Jeffrey community? So obviously being a part of it yourself, you were, yeah. I think, number two of our yarns, our blog posts, like in the early <laughs> One of the days. OGs. OGs. <laughs> you've been there since day dot. Like what what would you like to see and get out of Jeffrey? Um I've always loved how open you guys are to collaboration. Yeah. And bringing people together, which I've never seen before on another platform mm. of like um almost like a linkedin style community yeah um of young creators and local talents and so cool. i love how organic you guys are how you're bringing that in and like making it accessible for people mm. and then on top of that you know like your products that you're bringing out you're not limited in any way by what you could or couldn't bring out when you mm. see a need you guys yeah. just feel like you fill it you know like 
the mm. fact that you're bringing out flipping awesome merch one week and then the next week you're bringing out candles yeah. it's like <laughs> it's pretty cool yeah yeah um so i really in terms of vision i think if you guys keep going on that path it could be like a real hub of community content you know we're like so cool these people that don't really get a voice or get to say stuff yeah. that they would usually want to say to a large group, you mm-hmm. know, they actually do actively get a voice and yeah. get more public attention and so stuff. Cool. And yeah. Damn. So I love it. That's my that's awesome. So unreal. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool hearing someone else's heart. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So like true. What someone in the community, it's not just us. It's not just Cam and Charlie. Like nah, nah. it's their thing. Like it's yeah. not, that's not the point. <laughs> and I think seeing, seeing that collaboration and stuff and like being able to be part of that and the different moving pieces that are all involved and different companies and different locals and creatives yeah. and it's yeah. just fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's so be honest. Fun. I literally just <laughs> grabbing our mic, heading down the road, <laughs> popping up to George and setting up yeah. shop, yeah. Or recording yeah. a podcast. Like it's just fun. It's yeah. just it's a great time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's and, really good. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. It's been amazing um chatting with you like today jordan it's been such a privilege honestly yeah um that's cool it's really yeah good. appreciate your vulnerability and just like sharing who you are and your heart behind what you do yeah, yeah. almost yeah, taken aback by just like straight just up the nuggets yeah. of wisdom and knowledge and i'm just sitting here like soaking it up like, like, like food is a language <laughs> <laughs> this is profound <laughs> stuff <laughs> yeah no, someone awesome, quote man. this man <laughs> well there will definitely be some snippets taken out of this podcast. 100%. <laughs> Yeah. yeah thank you bro uh, it's been epic yarning no yeah. thanks yeah I've really enjoyed it and um I love what you guys are doing as well so yeah I'm stoked to be part of it how good yeah what's that number two that's it number two is done number two baby and often loaded my wife <laughs>